Welcome to Leading Leaders Podcast. Five minute videos, five days a week. You know, usually I'm not asked for an autograph unless it's uh, as I'm checking out at Wendy's and I use my credit card to pay for lunch. Subscribe now for our extensive video library of leadership lessons promoting faith, family, and freedom. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast, and it really is fascinating to me that on this day which we remember 9-11, because it is 9-11, and we think of how that day in American history literally changed the way we live. TSA, security checkpoints, no liquids on the aircraft. Many of those things didn't exist in the concept of travel before 9-11-2001. But just remember, if you graduated from high school last year, or if you graduate this year and after, odds are very high you were not even alive when 9-11 happened, which means it's almost like talking to young people about Pearl Harbor. I wasn't there, I can't remember. I I don't know what D-Day was, except that our history books teach us what D-Day was. I I don't know what it looked like to be in the protest of the Vietnam War. I I wasn't old enough then to experience it. I I don't know what it was like to be a soldier, to come home and get off an aircraft to be spit at, or have things thrown at me, I I simply don't know. But I was a firefighter in the late 90s, or the early 90s, and I did serve during Desert Storm, and I was an American soldier who came home to a regular welcome. Not a hero's welcome, but a regular welcome. I was still on a volunteer firefighter when 9-11 happened. And I understand what first responders go through. Social media sometimes allows us to see through a window of someone else's life in a way that we never could have before. I recently, on my own timeline, reshared a story from Houston, from KHOU, uh, that had been talking about a car accident that happened in New Mexico. That made news because it was a country music singer who was from Texas who got involved in the accident, or maybe even caused the accident. But... The first responder who came to the scene happened to be an EMT and the father of one of the young girls killed in the accident. She was 16. Now, I personally, as a volunteer firefighter, have been responsible for removing a young girl from the car while the other firefighter that responded was in shock because it was his daughter and she was deceased on the scene. Now, if you've never lived through moments like that, an autograph might be traumatic. I didn't get my autograph. I didn't get my jersey signed. I can't believe it. My world is going to fall apart. Yeah, I I woke up today on this day we remember 9-11 and the work of our genuine, true American heroes, our firefighters and our first responders who literally put their lives in harm's way every day and on this day in infamy, Many of them lost their lives trying to do the job they signed up to do. Yes, I believe they're heroes. But I believe that a social justice warrior who comes armed with a video camera on their cell phone for the sole purpose of recording an event to make it viral, to make themselves become notorious or famous or Insta-famous or Instagram-famous or YouTube-famous or whatever you want to call it, by mocking someone else and pulling a moment out of time, an emotional reaction or overreaction, and a very small sliver of time out of someone else's day, week, month, your life, and go, see what kind of person this is? See what they did to this child to not sign an autograph? Okay, hold up for a minute. Number one, let's not even talk about the amount of privilege required for you to have the opportunity to be close enough to an NFL superstar To ask for an autograph, there are thousands of children who don't have shoes. I'm just saying. Let's go one step further, though, and ask, how in the world did we get a video of this? Because someone planned it. It wasn't incidental. And part of the plan, you have to notice, if the video or the image that I saw had anything to do with it, 
he's wearing the other guy's jersey. The other team's jersey. The nemesis. I'm just saying, it sounded to me like a setup from the very beginning. This player was being set up to be mocked so that the video would go viral, so they could play the excuse that he won't even sign an autograph for this poor little kid. And on the day of 9-11, that's the story that blows up my newsfeed with thousands of engagements. That's disgusting to me. But I also know in leadership, it happens every day. Every day you're right on the edge as a leader of someone accusing you based on a very small sliver of time. An accusation that may not have any truth to it whatsoever, but defending yourself against the ac accusation, especially in the world of social media, becomes as damaging as if what you'd been accused of actually did happen. You'll spend more time, more effort, more money, more energy arguing about a false accusation than you would just going on with your life. But if you think I'm kidding about that, just go back and watch the social media events around the Kavanaugh hearings. Several times, the data came back and said, we can't find any evidence to this at all. And yet, it became a national and international thing. Why? Because that leader held beliefs that the social justice warriors didn't agree with. And it doesn't take much to make a claim, make a viral video, send it around the world, get a few people behind you, and the claim doesn't even have to be true to destroy your reputation. Leaders, you need to watch your P's and Q's. Absolutely. Be on the top of your guard. Also, always know what your core values are and operate according to those core values all the time, every time. You better also begin to become very aware of the people around you with devices in their hand who have no other intention than to make themselves insta-famous and create notoriety around their own name. Have you heard of swatting? I talked about this a couple of days ago, maybe it's been a week or so ago, a family that I know personally, we went to church together for a long time, was swatted because their kids were playing a game online and the people they were playing against called 911, reported their address and said there was harm at that home and SWAT showed up at their house. The kids that called it in were only hoping to record the video of the police busting in the door so that they could get the notoriety. No concern whatsoever for the physical, life-threatening harm or emotional damage that could be done to the family that they were destroying. If you think this social media, social justice warrior thing is not dangerous, this is a dangerous slide in human behavior. Notoriety at all costs, notoriety at somebody else's expense, totally okay with that as long as I get the notoriety. Ever heard of world star? Check it out. Just Google the word world star hip hop. See what you find. I'm Jay Lauren Norris with Leading Leaders Podcast for Tell It Like It Is TV. Have a blessed day. Leadership team. If attitude is going to have a deep impact on your business and bottom line, make it a positive attitude with a positive impact. Visit jlaurenorris.com slash attitude hack 